بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى العاشر أي الناقض العاشر the tenth invalidator from the invalidators of al Islam he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى الإعراض عن دين الله لا يتعلمه ولا يعمل به to turn away entirely and to leave off the religion of Allah and to not learn it and nor to apply it the author he says what دليل قوله تعالى and the evidence for this is the statement of Allah the Most High ومن أظلم من من ذكر بآيات ربه ثم أعرض عنها إن من المجرمين منتقمون the author he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal and the meaning of which is, and who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the ayat, meaning the proofs and the evidences, the verses, the signs and lessons and revelations. And who does more wrong than the one who is reminded of the ayat of his Lord, and then he turns away from them. Verily, we shall take retribution from uh, the mujrimun, meaning the criminals and the disbelievers and polytheists and sinners. So this is the issue. The author, he's mentioning that the people of knowledge they refer to as uh, Kufru Ali'arad. Kufru Ali'arad. The disbelief of turning away. Turning away from the religion of Allah Azza wa entirely. And the author, he mentioned uh, an evidence for this. And uh, there are many proofs in the book of Allah Azza wa with regards to this. The author, he mentioned the evidence that is found in uh, Surah Al-Sajdah. But likewise, there is a similar verse also in Surah Al-Kahf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَمَنْ أَظْرَمُ مِنْ مَنْ ذُكِرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهِ And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the verses and the proofs, the ayat of his Lord, but then he turns away from them, forgetting what his deeds, forgetting what his hands have sent forth from deeds. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned this issue as well in, uh, in Surah, in surah uh, Al-Jinn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَمَنْ يُعْرِضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ رَبِّهِ يَسْلُكْهُ عَذَابًا صَعَدًا وَمَنْ يُعْرِضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ رَبِّهِ يَسْلُكْهُ عَذَابًا صَعَدًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, and whosoever turns away from the reminder of his Lord, meaning this Qur'an, and practicing, uh, and did not practice its laws, and follow its orders, then he will cause him to enter in a severe torment, meaning in the blazing fire, the fire of hell. So the issue here is the issue of Adi Arad and turning away, turning away from the legislation and turning away from the guidance entirely, turning away from the guidance entirely, not learning it and not applying it, not having any concern for it whatsoever, not having any concern for it whatsoever, turning away from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, not learning what he was upon or having a concern to learn and turning away from believing in him not having a care for his affair and not learning his affair nor working by way of it. If an individual were to say that he did not uh, believe in the messenger nor did, he did it, nor did he deny him. He did not believe in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nor did he deny him. But and he does not listen to that which has come from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he does not have a concern for that then this is all disbelief. And this is known as kufru al i'rad Disbelief of turning away of turning away and rejecting guidance of turning away and rejecting that guidance. Even if the individual who said no, he will not take an allegiance with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor would he have enmity towards him. And he does not believe in him, nor does he disbelieve in him. He will be silent, will not take a position in that, then this is all considered disbelief, wudiyadu billah. This is all considered disbelief, wudiyadu billah. And the people of knowledge, they mentioned that Ali Arad, and he yakunu bisam'i wal qalb. That it would occur with the hearing and listening, meaning a person he would turn away entirely and not listen to the affairs of the deen. And he would not listen to that which has come from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And he would not uh, strive to understand that or have a concern for that. And he would turn away from listening to this. Uh, and likewise, to turn away with the heart and to not try to comprehend and not have any care or concern for that. All of this is uh, is disbelief, or the other billah, meaning to turn away entirely. To turn away entirely. 
And from that, likewise, turning away from it, tawheed, not learning it, tawheed, and not applying it and working by way of it, not accepting it and not having a care for it, not listening to its evidences and proofs, not listening to the evidences and the proofs that have come clarifying the tawheed, coming in the Quran and in the Sunnah, and likewise uh, the, uh, in, in the creation and pondering over these affairs. He turns away from it entirely. He doesn't learn the affairs of Tawheed nor the affairs of Shirk, and he has no concern for that whatsoever. And he does not work by that what, uh, absolutely, then this is disbelief. Then this is then this is disbelief. The people of knowledge, they clarify uh, between this issue here, Ali Arab Bil Kuliyah. And this is what is intended here to turn away entirely. To turn away entirely, to not have any care or concern for it whatsoever, to not even listen to the affairs of the deen. To not have any care or concern to listen to the affairs of the deen, nor to apply them or work by way of them. This is disbelief. As for the individual who he has learned the foundation of the religion, and his Islam is established and he's a Muslim, but he turns away from learning some of the affairs of the religion, not in entirety, but some of the affairs, then this is considered disobedience, and it is lesser than disbelief. And it is lesser than disbelief. So the person who is Islam is established and he has learned the fundamental pillars of Islam and that which is incumbent to know and to believe in and, he, and to work by way of. And he has established the foundation of Islam and that Iman and his Islam is correct. And then after this he turns away from learning some of the affairs of the religion and he did not learn them and he did not work by way of them. Likewise, then also this is a, this is a, then this issue here, this is disobedience, this is ma'siyah, this is sin. But it is not, uh, it, it is not disbelief. Is not disbelief. So likewise, the people of knowledge they clarify that uh, the affairs that must be learned in the religion are two types. The, the knowledge that must be obtained, or the knowledge of the religion that one will learn, is two types, and that which is uh, obligatory and the religion cannot be corrected by way of it, like the affairs of aqidah, and likewise how to establish the prayer properly, and any endeavor that a person he hopes to do in his life, he must learn how to do that, abiding by the the regulations and limits of Allah Azza wa Jal. Learning the correct meaning of the statement La ilaha illallah and what it necessitates and requires, and the correct meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah and what it necessitates and requires, and learning uh, the belief in the angels and the books and uh, the messengers and the last day and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then likewise learning the rulings of Tahar and Salah, the everyday affairs that one must perform in his daily life. And then if he is going to be a person of wealth or business and the life like this, then he is going to or he's going to embark on an endeavor in the worldly affairs, then likewise he must learn the regulations and limits with regards to that. All of this is incumbent and obligatory upon a believer to learn and to know. And if he were to fall short in this, then he will be sinning. Then he'll be sinning. And if he were to turn away from this in entirety and not have any concern for this whatsoever, then he's disbelieving. Billah. As for the other affairs of learning in the religion, that which is not obligatory from uh, the affairs that are... Uh, considered uh, recommended to learn and not obligatory or even if they were obligatory but only and it's obligation for some of the Muslims to learn but not all of them then if a person he turned away from these affairs he would not be he would not be disbelieving he would not be be disbelieving and uh, this is something that's recommended for a person to learn and uh, it's, it's not required for him to learn and it's not required for him to learn, like learning the Qira'at, the different recitations of the Qur'an, and the modes of recitation, and the details of uh, at tajweed or the details of sarf, and nahu, and, gram and, uh, and grammar, and the Arabic language, and the likes like this. This is not obligatory, and the one who did not learn it, he's not sinning. But, uh, of course, from the Arabic language, there's a portion that one has to learn in order for his deen to be correct, meaning in order for him to pray, and in order for him to understand the proper aqidah and creed. But as for any that which is after that, if a person he did not learn that, and then, then he is only leaving off something that is recommended and, and not obligatory. Therefore, he's not a help, held accountable for that, and Allah knows best. So, therefore, it is important to understand this issue here that al uh, Arab and Dini Allahi Azza wa Jal. Not every aspect of turning away from the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal is disbelief, but whether to turn away from that in, in kulia, bil kulia, al Arabu bil kulia, to turn away absolutely. From all aspects, to not from from all aspects, to not learn or have a concern to learn, and to not apply it likewise, to not listen to the affairs of the deen and have no concern for that, and to not work by way of it, and to not comply to his legislation whatsoever. All of this is disbelief. As for the one who his deen is established and his Islam is established, and then he left off even some of the obligatory affairs that he must learn, and he was negligent with regards to that. After establishing his Islam and his iman properly, accordingly, they need a foundation of that. 
Then if he were to turn away from learning the obligatory affairs, then he would be sinning, and this would be lesser than disbelief. So a believer, he must be aware of these details like this in order to stay away, in order to stay uh, away from oppressing the people and falling into transgression and transgressing the limits and going beyond the boundaries with regards to the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, so that a person, he can be upon clarity and insight with regards to al-ahkam the sharia, the legislative, the legislative rulings. The legislative rulings. So therefore, we see that the one who turned away from the deen entirely, then he is the one who has disbelieved. As for the one who turned away uh, from some portions of the deen and did not learn them from the obligatory affairs, but his Islam is established, then he is only sinning. And as for the one who did not uh, care to learn the recommended affairs of the religion, then he's not sinning, but likewise, and he, he is missing out on a great virtue in life. And no doubt, the happiness of a believer and his joy in this life is by learning and by understanding the religion and being upright upon the straight path upon clarity and insight uh, in his deen and his religion and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names and his attributes and likewise from his creation and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his legislation tabaraka wa ta'ala Allah he has ayat and his signs and proofs and evidences matluwa maqru'a wa ayat mushahada mashuda and likewise, he has signs and evidences that are seen and witnessed, and there are signs and evidence that are recited and uh, pondered upon. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, therefore, it's, in, it's incumbent to learn. It's incumbent to learn. And all success is in learning. So, the author, he is clarifying this issue, and it's the tenth naqib that he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala. And then he says, Ma farqa fi jami'i hadhihi nawaqib bayna al hazili wal jaddi wal khaif illa al muqra. There is no difference with regards to all of these nullifiers between the one who is joking or the one who is serious or the one who is scared except for the one who is forced and coerced. Except for the one who is forced and coerced. And he says uh, that there's no difference. And the one who fell into one of these invalidators or the one who committed one of these nullifiers, whether it's with speech or with action. And then it doesn't matter whether he claimed he was joking or even if he was serious or even if he was scared. Even if he was scared, so long as he was not coerced and forced to do that out of coercion, and he threatened with his life and the likes like this, then all of this would be considered disbelief. All of this would be considered disbelief. He mentioned here Al Hazil. Al Hazil is the one who is joking, the one who is playing around, the one who is not being serious. He's make, he's clarifying here that even if somebody were to commit and perpetrate one of these uh, invalidators of Islam, and then if you were to say he's only joking, that would not be accepted from him. And this uh, has been, and there's an example for this that people of knowledge they make, and with regards to uh, divorce, if a man he were to know uh, the rulings of divorce, and he was aware, he was aware of these affairs, and then he were to say to his his wife that verily you're divorced, anti tariq, like this, and then whatever it comes down to dealing with this ruling or this issue, he said I was only joking with her, I was just playing around with her, and I wasn't serious. We say, you know the ruling of this statement here? anti thought yeah, I know the ruling. It's very clear for me. But 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 I'm only joking. I was only joking. And it has it. And it has it. I was just playing with her, joking around with her. Then uh, people of knowledge, they will say that that's not accepted from you and your wife is divorced. This is something you can't play with. Similarly like this, now they will understand what is intended by the has it, the one who is joking. And the one who knows what he's saying. He's saying something, he knows what it means. And that meaning is intended, but he's only joking or playing around. This is what he claims. He's only joking or playing around. Even with regards, uh, even if he claimed that he's only joking or playing around, the one who does that with the deen and with these affairs of the invalidators of Islam, he would still be declared a disbeliever. The deen is not a place, the deen is nothing to play with. It's nothing but seriousness and reality. And we have been created for this purpose and we'll be held accountable for these affairs. So therefore, the deen it must be honored and respected in all times and all aspects, and it's not something that is joked with or played with. And it's not something that is taken lightly. So therefore, the author, he says, There's no difference. In all of these invalidators, between the one who's joking and the one who's serious. The one who's serious, that's clear. And if he committed one of these affairs. And likewise, the one who was scared. 
He may be the one who was scared, but he's not being coerced. He's a scared. He's scared he might lose some position in the dunya, or he's scared of something, or or of the disbelievers. But he's not being coerced. Even if he were to commit one of these invalidators while being scared, his heart is scared. He's afraid uh, of the disbelievers for one reason or another, or something. Uh, that he might lose from the dunya, so therefore he will commit one of these invalidators about Islam, not being coerced and not being forced, only because he's scared. And then verily he disbelieved. Yadim billah. Yadim billah. Illa al -mukrah. The author he says, except for the one who is being coerced, and the one who is being forced to say or to do an action of disbelief uh, while his heart is content with faith. Except for the one who has been coerced and his heart is tranquil and secure and he feels safe with faith and his heart is tranquil and is at rest with sincere faith and, and Iman. So therefore this person he has an excuse. The one who is truly coerced and he is forced and threatened with his life. And it is apparent that this is something that is a reality for him and he fears for his life in this manner, then uh, at this time uh, he, it, was, it will be allowed for him. It will, be, it will be allowed for him to make a statement of disbelief or an action of disbelief uh, so long as his heart is tranquil and at peace and at rest with sincere faith. And his heart dislikes the statement or action that, that he is making. He's making some of the people of knowledge they clarify likewise, they clarify likewise that this also must be in order to repel the coercion, not to please the disbelievers. And he, meaning that this person he's being coerced, and he, somebody is threatening him, for example, with the weapon. You say this, curse the messenger, or else we will do this. Curse the messenger, or else we're going to shoot you, uh, or we're going to stab you, or we're going to do this to you. Or, and, and the person has the ability. And he is there at that time like this. At this time, it's allowed for a person to make that statement. It's allowed for a person to make that statement. So long as he is trying to defend himself and, and repel this oppressor and this coercion. As for the person, he's not really doesn't really believe that he's going to do it or, he, or the likes like this or he's only doing this to make the disbelievers happy, not to repel coercion. Like he's only, he's afraid. But they're not coercing him. He just wants to please them and to make them happy with him and like this, so they like him. And the likes like this, and all of this is not is not accepted. All of this is not accepted. So the condition for ikrah is that the heart is tranquil and satisfied with faith and dislikes that statement or action that one is being forced to do. And likewise, the the force and the coercion has to be a reality, not something that is just any uh, perceived or thought. It can't be a delusion. It has to be a reality. And likewise, the person has to do that in order to repel uh, in order to repel the coercion and not in order to please please the disbelievers the Muslim says la ilaha illallah mukhrisina lahu deena walau karihal walau karihal kafirun that we bear witness there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and we make the religion sincerely for him entirely even if the disbelievers dislike that so then the believer he will not seek to please the disbelievers and he, at the cost of his deen and his religion but as for the case, whenever he's defending his life and he's repelling coercion and, and force, at this time it's permissible. And this has come in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, whenever the Muslims were weak in Mecca and they were oppressing uh, Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu and he was uh, going through torture and the likes like this and, to telling, and they were telling him to curse the Prophet وسلم, and he refused and refused and they harmed him and harmed him until he fell. Uh, until he did that and then he came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he explained the situation and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said how is your heart he said my heart is disliking that and my heart is full of faith and, but, and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he affirmed him upon that he said that he did not disbelieve and that if they do that to him again then he would do the same thing if they do that to him again then then he would do the same thing it's allowed for him in this situation because of al because of al so therefore, the author says there's no difference in the, in all of these invalidators between the one who is joking and the one who is serious and the one who is scared, except for the one who is coerced. Except for the one who is coerced. Then he says, Rahimahullahu uh, ta'ala, wa kulluha min ma yakunu khatara. And all of these affairs are the most dangerous of affairs. And he's mentioning here, this is from the reason why he specified these ten. And he will pull you have an album in my you can that all of these 10 here these are from the most dangerous the most dangerous of the nawaqid 
ومن أكثر ما يكون وقوعا and likewise the ones that occur the most and occur the most amongst amongst the ummah فينبغي للمسلم أن يحضرها ويخاف منها على نفسه and therefore it is incumbent for a Muslim to be aware of them and to fear for his soul with regards to these and that he would fear them from the way of a believer is that he would fear to fall into disbelief and that he would fear to fall into shirk and that he would fear to fall into sin he fears the anger of Allah a believer he fears the anger of Allah and his punishment and from the truthfulness of that fear is that a believer he will learn it tawheed and he would learn Islam properly and he will strive against his soul to comply to that and likewise from the truthfulness of that fear and the honesty of a believer with regards to that and his faith in Iman is that he would learn about shirk and he would learn about disbelief and he would learn about al ma'asi and disobedience and actions of transgression and dhulm and the likes like this in order to be upon clarity and to avoid it. In order to be upon clarity and avoid it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned about his prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam that he made dua وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَسْلَامِ And take me and my, my children away from worshipping the idols, from worshipping the idols. And he was afraid for that for himself and for his family. Alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim al-Khalil. Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned about this. وَمَنْ يَأْمَنَ الْبَلَاءَ بَعْدِ Ibrahim. And who is safe from the calamity? I mean, the calamity of worshipping idols and stones and the likes like this. And from, from falling into shirk after Ibrahim. Meaning of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Khalil al-Rahman, he was afraid of this affair, then how could one after him not be afraid of that? Then how could one after him not be afraid of that? So therefore, I believe he would fear this, and he would uh, be aware of this, and he would learn this in order to avoid and stay away from it, from it upon clarity. The author, he says, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ مُجِبَاتِ غَضَبِهِ وَعَلِيمِ إِقَابِ And we seek refuge of Allah from that which necessitates his anger, and from his severe punishment, and from his painful punishment. And from his painful punishment. Sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And uh, this is the end of these nuaqib. And uh, we have closed uh, this uh, lesson and finished this book. Walillahi alhamd. And uh, insha'Allah uh, in place of this class. And uh, in place of this class. And next week we'll study Umdat al-Ahkam. Instead of only Sunday and Monday, we'll study Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And inshallah soon the, the book, the new book that we will begin on uh, Tuesday, on the Tuesday and Wednesday classes will be announced soon inshallah. And until then, we will continue to study Umdat al-Ahkam all four days. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.